everyone makes mistakes, and this is normal. However, you need to be able to distinguish between mistakes and purposeful betrayal. I'm not perfect and I can do stupid things, but my wife turned out to be much worse. What I went through, I wouldn't wish even on my enemy. Dave, she murmured, we must talk. There's something important we need to discuss. Sure thing, Gwen, I responded, looking over at my wife warmly. What's on your mind? Stop reading that newspaper for a second and listen to me, she insisted, catching my attention. Honestly, I was still pondering Arsenal's prospects against Chelsea that upcoming weekend. The newspaper suggested that Walcott might not be fully fit after his injury last week. All right, dear, I conceded, folding the paper on my lap. I held on to it tightly, hoping she wouldn't notice. Last month, she said plainly, staring at me. What about it? I innocently responded. It was really hot that weekend, she continued. What weekend? I asked, feeling a sense of unease creeping over me. You know perfectly well which weekend, she spat out. The weekend when you and your three friends went on that absurd, idiotic, so-called bloody fishing trip. Oh, that weekend, I replied weakly, the newspaper slipping from my grasp. I might be in trouble. What about it? I know. You know what? I squirmed. I know what you did, she declared, glaring at me. We just went fishing, I stammered, sensing that I was already losing ground but grasping for something to say. In the last evening? Gwen demanded, and I knew I was caught. Damn it. I work as a partner in a small specialty construction company. I handle the technical aspects with my qualifications. Ted takes care of paperwork while Mike and Nick contribute physical strength and on-site expertise. They motivate our construction teams to work faster and possibly better than they might otherwise. We're a diverse group, but we get along well. The four of us and our partners have become close friends. Last August, we went on a fishing trip, although Ted was the only one who knew much about fishing. We spent most of the time on a boat, with three of us more concerned about keeping the beer cold than the bait. Evenings were often spent drinking at the local pub. Then came the final night. Let's head into town, Mike suggested. There's more to do there, and we could have some fun. I'm not sure I'm up for it, I hesitated, but they insisted. To be honest, I wasn't too bothered about it. We ended up dressed in ordinary clothes, trying to regain our youth. Beer flowed freely, music played, although mostly terrible, but it was fascinating to watch people. Damn it, Nick muttered as an attractive, slender girl in a miniskirt too thin to bend over ran past him. I wish I was ten years younger. More like fifteen, Ted interjected with a laugh. Even then, you wouldn't have a chance. What about her? I interjected, nodding towards another young woman, compared to whom the first one looked too vulgar. Damn, Ted exclaimed. Double damn, Mike chimed in. Nick and I exchanged glances, silently agreeing with them. These girls were clearly out to have a good time and were dressed accordingly. Nothing much would have come of it considering three of us were happily married, and Mike, though single, had someone special waiting at home but we hadn't accounted for the hen party. Hen party? Well, kind of, yes. The resort attracted a diverse audience. That evening, a group of four women in their thirties were celebrating the divorce of one of them. It was unclear which of them was divorced, as they all seemed to be wearing wedding rings when. They came to our table and insisted on joining us. Of course, Mike agreed taking a few chairs from a nearby table, and none of us objected. What brings the four of you here? An attractive blonde asked. We're here to go fishing, Mike replied with a laugh, without going into further explanation. Okay, you've got my attention, handsome, the blonde retorted shamelessly, showing off her charms, especially to Mike. What are you going to do about it? To our surprise, 
but perhaps not to hers, Mike quickly got up, took her hand, and left with her. That was the last time we saw them that evening. Trust Gloria, the slender brunette chuckled. She's pretty promiscuous. Mike is not married, Judd Nick remarked. Gloria's husband doesn't have to know about this, the slightly overweight woman giggled, setting the tone for the rest of the evening as our conversation became increasingly provocative and risky. Does anyone wear bras here? Mick asked after his sixth or maybe seventh beer. His tongue had already loosened up a lot. No bras, one of them chuckled back. We agreed to go outside tonight without too much cargo. Show us. Ted suggested, and to our surprise, they did, right there in the pub. All three of them, much to our amazement. Do it again, Nick shouted. Come back to our hotel, and we'll show you more, suggested the redhead, probably the most beautiful of them, who had already flirted with me. At first, we refused, but after seven beers and three attractive women flaunting themselves in front of us, the decision had already been made. Five minutes later, we split into pairs, and hand in hand with our chosen companions, headed to their rather dubious hotel located just ten minutes away. I leaned into the other two quietly as the girls headed to the restroom. Let's just hang around for about thirty minutes, all right? Sounds good, Ted nodded. We'll goof off a bit, maybe some light fooling around, and then we'll leave. I'm on board, Nick chimed in. If my Jilly ever caught wind of this, she'd have my head. Whether it was the seven pints of beer or our lack of foresight, things didn't go as planned. By the early hours of the next morning, the three of us were sneaking away, feeling guilty as hell and wishing we had stuck to our word. Honestly, we wished we had never agreed to go fishing in the first place. What about last night? Gwen asked. What do you mean? I was stalling for time. Those four women you brought. Oh, they are. Yes, they are, she snapped. Do you want to explain? Well, Mike left with one of them, I tried to distract her, not sure how much she already knew, and omitting Mike's marital status. In the redhead, she insisted, making it clear that the conversation was over. It's time to be honest and hope for the best. We've had too much to drink, dear, I confessed. I don't deny that something happened, but... I don't remember much. So you admit it? Gwen growled. You slept with that redhead all night. That's not entirely true, I replied honestly, trying to keep my composure. I may have been fooling around with her, but in my condition, it wasn't for long. We both fell asleep. And what happened the next morning? No, I replied sincerely. I woke up feeling terrible about what had happened. I was ashamed. Besides, she didn't look as attractive as she did the night before. Would it matter if she did? My wife asked with an unreadable expression, putting me in front of a difficult choice. Should I give a politically correct answer or tell the truth? I chose the latter. I'm not certain. I confessed softly. I'd like to believe not. I question whether I could have forgiven myself, Gwen. So I'm just relieved it didn't come to that. I actually trust you on this, Dave. Her words brought relief to me. Thank you, honey, I smiled with uncertainty. We can overcome this. Our love and our marriage are strong. I'll do whatever it takes, Gwen, I promise. As I searched for more words to plead my case, she simply stood staring at me until finally breaking the silence. Don't think you're getting away that easily, you jerk, Gwen informed me, her voice eerily calm and precise. I'm meeting with the other women this evening to discuss our course of action. They all know. Of course they do, I replied. How do you think I found out? One of the guys spilled the beans. I asked. Who? Who betrayed us? That's for us to know and for you to worry about. I'm meeting Kim and Jill and hopefully Mary, Mike's girlfriend. We're going out for the night and might return late. 
for heaven's sake, don't do anything foolish, I pleaded. Two wrongs don't make a right. We're not planning to, but who knows? Your opinion doesn't matter anymore. We're meeting to figure out what to do about you and how to make you pay. Please don't do anything we'll both regret, I begged. It won't help anything. We'll see, she concluded, brushing past me toward our bedroom, leaving me sitting there in despair. Gwen returned downstairs surprisingly quickly despite her usual lengthy preparation for going out. She was dressed to impress in her shortest dress and highest heels. She looked stunning, yet vulnerable and worryingly open to advances. Don't go through with it, Gwen, I warn once more. Doesn't feel great when the tables are turned, does it, jerk, she retorted. I didn't intend for it to happen, Gwen, I reminded her. It was just the result of too much alcohol. I'm not plotting anything, sweetheart, she sneered. Just going out with the girls for a drink, but who knows what could occur if I have too much. I remained silent, realizing there was little more I could do except restrain her, which I wasn't inclined to do. Despite my concerns, I doubted she would act foolishly, and her threats were likely aimed at punishing me. That I could handle. While I'm out, do the dishes, she grumbled. Yes, dear. Clean up the mess you've made in the living room. Yes, dear. The washing machine needs to be emptied. Yes, dear. There's a stack of laundry in the kitchen. You've got to be kidding me. I protested, you might prefer that over some other ideas I have, Gwen practically yelled, her temper rising. I'll consider it, I conceded unhappily. If it came down to doing some ironing or my wife being unfaithful, there wasn't much of a choice, was there? I was left feeling very unhappy as Gwen stormed out without another word. Ring, 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 ring. Hey Dave, it's Ted, greeted me when I answered the phone ten minutes later. Has Gwen left already? She just stormed out, I informed him. What about Kim? Hardly just a storm out, mate. I swear she looked ready to grab the bread knife. And Nick and Jill? I inquired. Same story, mate. Nick's in the doghouse, just like us. They're all heading out for a night on the town, and who knows what they'll get into. What about Mary? I pressed. How's she handling things with Mike? Couldn't tell you. Ted replied. I have a feeling he might have spilled the beans, but it's water under the bridge now if he did. He'd be feeling it, and we're not, I questioned. Not yet, Ted responded, but it seems like we might be soon. We didn't talk much longer, and when he hung up, I tried calling Nick, only to hear from his teenage daughter that mom and dad had a huge fight, mom left somewhere, and dad went to the pub. Mike didn't even pick up his phone. I endured a rather unpleasant few hours, not because I disliked doing household chores like washing dishes, but because I was preoccupied with something I dreaded considering, would Gwen do something foolish tonight? I doubted it, at least not willingly. However, she was out with Jilly, who, despite her beauty, had a strong will of her own. Jilly was fiercely feminist and had often clashed with Ted and me although it was mostly light-hearted banter on her part and her exaggerated reactions. That's what concerned me, the potential for overreaction. I hoped that the three of them wouldn't impulsively do something we'd all regret later. I prayed they would take their time to communicate and resolve whatever issues arose, especially considering the foolish antics of us, their intoxicated husbands. Therefore, I felt relieved when just after 11.30, I heard a car pull up outside, and a few minutes later, Gwen walked in. I was glad to see that everything seemed normal. She appeared just as composed and beautiful as when she left, not a hair was out of place on her lovely head. She stood there visibly anxious before speaking. Did you finish the dishes? she inquired. Yes, and I also did the ironing, I responded, noting a slight smile on her face. Shall we retire for the night? She surprised me with. How did tonight go? 
I asked hesitantly. It went smoothly, she replied with a self-assured smile. Don't worry, there won't be any surprises for you when we go to bed. What did you discuss? I pressed. We'll talk about it tomorrow, she insisted. Let's head to bed. Well, in such a situation, when your wife suggests going to bed three times in as many sentences, why argue? Especially when she's as attractive as mine and had already taken her top off before reaching the bedroom. Needless to say, the night turned out, despite its initial perplexity, far better than expected. The only question lingering was whether it was the calm before the storm. The next morning felt just as surreal as the unexpected intimacy of the previous night. She was already up and showered by the time. I made my way downstairs, breakfast was underway. Our conversation flowed as usual until I attempted to broach the topic of our issue, only to be met with a silent glare effectively shutting me down. Sensing her reluctance, I didn't press further. Will you be back at the usual time, Dave? Gwen inquired as she prepared to depart for her train. I suppose so, I replied, still perplexed by her demeanor. Don't be tardy, she advised with a smile. I'll whip up something special. No need for that, honey, I protested, still utterly bewildered. Oh, but there is, honey, she grinned mischievously as she exited the house. We haven't addressed last night yet. Oh no, when I arrived at the office, the other three were already there, deep in conversation. Mike adamantly denied revealing any secrets, and the rest of us followed suit. It wasn't until much later that we found out Mike's girlfriend had hired someone to tail him. Apparently, Mike had been unfaithful before, so the rest of us weren't thrilled that his indiscretions were affecting us. You were all guilty that night, he reminded us, and we couldn't argue. It turned out to be a frustrating day for all of us, as none of the others could shed light on what our partners had been up to the night before or what they had discussed. Mike wasn't even sure if Mary had been present, as she hadn't returned his calls, which in hindsight wasn't surprising. When I got home around my usual time, Gwen greeted me warmly with a kiss on the cheek. She had prepared my favorite dinner and opened a bottle of good wine. I think you're wondering what happened last night she said, returning to the room with another bottle of wine. I was wondering, I replied nervously. What if I told you that we met four guys, went back to their hotel, and had a rough night, she asked. I was hoping you were joking, I replied grimly. We weren't joking, Gwen continued cheerfully. We were contacted several times, but all we did was communicate. Did you, communicate? I asked, feeling relieved. Yes, and we planned to, she continued, as if I hadn't said anything. We were discussing how to get back at them, new shoes in retaliation. I tried to make a joke, but she didn't laugh. We're going to even the score, all four of us, she said. Now hold on, I growled angrily. I won't have you picking up guys in bars. For weeks. I may have done it once when I was drunk, and I hardly remember if I did it at all, she surprised me. Oh, good, what just once? You won't know who and when, just know that it will happen, and then we will be even, she assured. Are we supposed to act like nothing happened? I asked. It can be difficult, my wife admitted, but I'll try if you do. I'm begging you, Gwen, there has to be another solution. I begged desperately, but she remained adamant. The four women discussed the matter thoroughly, and no matter how much I argued, Gwen didn't budge. According to her, we didn't have to accept it or leave. When I talked to Ted and Nick, they faced the same dilemma. As for Mike, although we knew that Mary was involved in the conversation with our life, she still has not answered any of his calls. We're stuck, I said and I felt like I was ready to give up and face the consequences because Nick was inclined to stand up to his wife if he persisted. The jerk seemed to be losing interest in our troubles and was probably already considering other options. Upon returning home, everything continued as usual, as if nothing had happened. 
I convinced myself, or perhaps deceived myself, that Gwen's warning was just that, a warning. It was meant to make us uneasy and ensure we didn't stray. Again, eventually, about a week later, Ted seemed to reach the same conclusion. He purposefully avoided any mention of our wives' threats, and even Nick stopped muttering about his wife under his breath. It seemed we had all moved past it, with smiles returning both at home and at work. Even Mike apparently found a new companion, although he didn't speak much about her. So, while she might not have been another Mary, she clearly brought him happiness. In a happier frame of mind, I realized the tension between Gwen and me needed addressing. Are we good now, honey? I brought up one evening. I suppose so, Dave, she grinned. It's just nice to feel like things are back to normal. Absolutely, I agreed, happily embracing her and planting a kiss on her lips. I'm relieved you didn't follow through with your threat. My heart skipped a beat as I sensed her tensing in my arms and avoiding eye contact. What's wrong? I asked. Nothing, she replied too quickly. Did you, are you trying to tell me? I stumbled, letting go of her. I'm not saying anything, Gwen muttered. For heaven's sake, Gwen. I burst out. Have you cheated? Have you been with someone else? I already told you, she snapped back. You wouldn't know when or with whom. Damn it, Gwen. I yelled. You can't do this to me. Sorry, honey, but I already have, she delivered the final blow. The tense discussion that ensued after that brief exchange of information was anything but pleasant. Though I had a multitude of thoughts I wanted to express, I was so agitated that I couldn't articulate them. Eventually, I stormed out of the house and headed to the local pub, dialing Ted along the way and inviting him to join me. Hey, Ted, I greeted him, passing him the pint I had bought for him. Gwen and I had a chat tonight, and you won't believe what she told me. Let me guess, she's been with someone else, he interjected, catching me off guard. You know! I exclaimed, accidentally spilling my beer. What about Kim? She's involved too, and Jilly seems like it. And you're both okay with it? Ted asked, nonchalantly. It is what it is, he replied matter-of-factly. And you're fine with that? What else can we do? It's done, he said with resignation. What about Nick? He's on the same page? It's better to move on and focus on our lives. We've got the council contract to deal with, we don't need more drama we can't fix. But Nick was adamant about kicking Jilly out if she went through with it. What changed? He had a change of heart, I suppose, Ted shrugged nonchalantly and asked if I wanted another pint. I did. In fact, I was more than ready for several more, and that appeared to conclude the matter. Gwen forgave my drunken return home, and life returned to its usual routine surprisingly smoothly. As it turned out, it felt like nothing had occurred, provided I avoided broaching the subject with Gwen. Doing so would result in her giving me the cold shoulder. Similarly, any attempts to discuss it with Ted, Nick, or even Mike were met with resistance. It seemed everyone was determined to pretend nothing had happened. After some introspection, I concluded it might be best to do the same. Not to say I didn't ponder who my wife might have been with or experience pangs of jealousy when she talked to unfamiliar men. However, I reasoned it was unlikely any of our acquaintances were involved. It would be too risky. I couldn't imagine Gwen or Jilly picking up strangers in a bar. Perhaps Kim would, and Mary wouldn't have any issue, but not Jilly and certainly not Gwen. They wouldn't do that. I thought about it. The likeliest scenario seemed to be Mary introducing them to some of her younger male friends, or maybe just one lucky guy had the chance to be with all four of them. I tried to push it out of my mind, but it lingered like a persistent ache until eventually, I couldn't keep it bottled up any longer. What's going on with you, Dave? Gwen demanded one day. You've been irritable all week. 
you know exactly what's going on, I snapped back at her. Not this again. She waved off my concerns. You got what was coming to you, and now we're square. Maybe I deserved it, and maybe we're even, but not knowing who it was is driving me crazy, Gwen. I pleaded. I've told you, honey, she reiterated for what felt like the hundredth time. You are never going to find out, and I'm not changing my mind. But you don't understand how it feels, Gwen, I continued, fighting back tears. Every time I see you talking to another guy at a party, I wonder if it was him. I've had to stop myself from confronting whoever you're with. Oh, Dave, it's really getting to you, isn't it? She replied sympathetically. I'm sorry, but I can't tell you. All I can say is that it happened once, and it won't happen again. And if it helps, it wasn't anything special. You didn't enjoy it. I didn't say that, she answered honestly. The thrill was in the anticipation and letting him undress me. The actual act was pretty ordinary. And that's supposed to make me feel better? I grumbled. Maybe not immediately, but knowing about your encounter with that redhead helped me when I thought about it later. So maybe my honesty will help you. So it didn't last long? I sought some reassurance. I didn't say that, honey, she replied reluctantly. It just wasn't remarkable. Not as satisfying as when we're at our best. Yes, sorry. Well, thanks a lot, I said sarcastically. I couldn't ignore it, though I would like to. I felt that if I continued to suppress it, it would eventually cause irreparable damage to our marriage. I tried to convey to Gwen the seriousness of the situation, explaining how important it was, but she remained indifferent. She didn't even confirm if the person involved was even remotely familiar to me. The only additional detail I was able to figure out was that there was more than one person involved with all three of them, and that Mary eventually distanced herself from them by not taking part in it. Her relationship with Mike was over, so it seemed pointless for her to get involved anyway. I questioned Ted and Nick in detail until they took a defensive stance and advised me to get on with my life and stop interfering with theirs. They were right, maybe, but the turmoil inside me did not go away. I was able to function normally most of the time, but some events, such as being shown on TV or the occasional mention of a client, triggered a flood of memories. I was thinking about getting a divorce. I was thinking about finding solace with another woman just to keep my secret. I considered various options, but none of them brought results. In my relentless search for answers, I began to collate the facts, realizing that Gwen had never lied to me openly. From her story, I concluded that most likely, it was about men we had encountered before. In addition, Mary, Mike's girlfriend, refrained from participating. Then it dawned on me, or at least, there is a high probability, Mike was the youngest among us, and Mary was at least four or five years younger than him. She socialized with a younger crowd, and we had encountered many of them at parties and ran into others at pubs. Some of them were men. About six months ago, Nick and I teased our wives for flirting with a couple of younger guys one night who appeared to be quite interested in them. What were their names again? Mick, Rick, Nick, something like that, but... I couldn't recall exactly. Nonetheless, I was sure I was onto something, even though I wasn't sure where to go with it. But then it clicked. Without mentioning it to the others, I made up an excuse to go out for the evening and found myself downtown, searching in the pubs and occasional clubs for someone I hoped would be there. No, not those guys but Mary herself, whom I hadn't seen since a week or so before that disastrous fishing trip. It was a long shot, but I got lucky, spotting her at a bar with a couple of other girls. I waited patiently until the other two were asked to dance by some guys, and then I made my move. Hi Mary, I greeted her, taking a seat uninvited in the chair just vacated by one of her friends. Long time no see. The expression she gave me confirmed that I was on the right track. It was a mix of surprise and that oh no, what is he doing here look. 
Hey Mar, I greeted again. How's it going? Hey, she replied, avoiding my gaze. I need to have a chat with you, Mary, I said softly, not wanting to scare her away. No way in hell, she yelled, startling me with her intensity. Get lost. Mary, calm down, I urged, taken aback by her outburst. I just want to talk. Like hell you do, you jerk, she shouted, drawing attention from the people nearby. There's no damn way I'm going to sleep with you. What else could I say? Go away and leave me alone. What would you do? What would you do when her three extremely burly friends, much younger and bulkier than me, showed up to support her stance? I left. I left on my own accord and very quickly. In reality, I left feeling defeated. So where did that leave me? You can only guess, because at that moment, I was completely clueless. My wife refused to communicate with me, my business partners and friends avoided my inquiries to the extent of telling me to leave, and now some girl I barely knew seemed to have unleashed trouble upon me. What options did I have? I made a decision. I had reached my limit. Honestly, I was so furious that I didn't care about the consequences anymore. I was determined to uncover the truth at any cost. Gwen. I practically shouted at her when I returned home. What's going on? If you don't tell me, I'm leaving. I swear I'll pack my things and disappear forever. I glared at her, my rage palpable, my fists clenched, and my teeth grinding. I meant every word. I was on the verge of lashing out at her, and I was determined to uncover the truth one way or another. Then everything went dark. I mean, pitch black, as if I had completely lost consciousness. Is he all right, Mike? You didn't need to hit him so hard. Leave it, Kim. You're just as responsible for this mess. You're one to talk. If you all had been honest with him from the start, we wouldn't be in this situation. Calm down, everyone. He's clueless. We can still get away with it. It's easy for you to say. You're not the one married to him, forced to pretend everything's normal every damn morning. We all agreed, Gwen. All six of us. Where's Mary? Why didn't she do her part? Don't blame her, Mike ruined their relationship. He should have controlled himself. Don't deflect, you hypocrite. If you had stopped when you should have, he wouldn't know a thing. Enough, all of you. What we need to do is. At that moment, I must have drifted back into unconsciousness, which, given what I had just heard, though unbeknownst to me at the time, was probably the best place for me to be. Hello, Mr. Rogers. How are you doing? I blinked and surveyed my surroundings. Where was? I am a beautiful woman, an exceedingly beautiful woman clad in white, Mr. Rogers assured, everything's all right. How are you feeling? The same beautiful woman, in the same white attire, reassured me, everything must be okay. She was smiling at me. Mr. Rogers, she spoke gently, how's your head? Are you experiencing any pain? I believe I love you, I whispered, then drifted back into unconsciousness, likely quite content. Okay, yeah, it's clear, but I didn't realize it at the time, even though I should have. The girl was a nurse, a very pretty one, and I found myself in some sort of hospital, though I had no recollection of how I got there. I vaguely remembered a heated discussion happening around me, something about Mike's pants, hypocrites, and Mary's absence. It didn't make sense, and my head was throbbing, so I didn't want to dwell on it. Hello, Dave, I realized someone was speaking to me, so I looked up hopefully. Gwen? I asked. Yes, honey, another pretty girl replied. Are you back with us? I think so. I hope so, I smiled back at her, vaguely recognizing my wife. Why am I here? You took a tumble down some stairs, Dave, the pretty woman, whom I was still trying to place in my mind, 
informed me. You hit your head, but you're okay now. We can take you home once the doctor gives the green light. Home, yes, sweetheart. Then you'll be fine. Good, I said aloud. Damn liar, I muttered silently so the woman couldn't hear. As the earlier conversation flooded back into my mind, pants, hypocrite, I hit him so hard. Mary Clueless, I have nothing to worry about, she had said. You've got to be kidding me. It might be obvious to you all reading this nonsense, but at the time it took me a while to connect the dots. All four of the girls had concocted a revenge scheme where each would sleep with another man to even the score. They needed four willing men for this plan to work. Sure, one guy could have sufficed, but that wouldn't align with their scheme, right? So, where were they going to find four willing guys at such short notice, whom they could trust to keep quiet? or perhaps even recognize a good opportunity when it presented itself. I knew my wife had a crush on Mike, though their flirting had always seemed harmless, and I'd witnessed Kim flirting with Nick after a few drinks, but I doubted it had ever gone beyond that. As for Ted and Jilly, no clue, but anything was possible. So, where did that leave me, Mary? The whole situation seemed absurd and I could barely believe it, yet all the pieces seemed to fit together perfectly. Regardless, I was clueless about what to do. I wasn't sure if I wanted my marriage to end, but at that moment, I was more concerned that this conflict would ruin our thriving business. What should I do? I concluded that I couldn't confront my wife with the evidence I'd gathered, and I no longer trusted my three partners and supposed friends. It seemed like there was only one safe option left. So, I found myself once again heading towards the lion's den. Mary, it's Dave, I said when she picked up the phone. Please don't hang up. There was silence on the other end, but at least no dial tone. Are you there, Mary? I begged. You're the only person I can turn to. I'm not going through with it, Dave, she muttered. I knew it was a bad idea from the start, and I shouldn't have agreed to it. If we hadn't been drinking, I would never have said yes. Yes to what, Mary? I asked softly. You know exactly what I mean, she cried. I can't do it. I won't. I don't understand what you're talking about, Mary, I responded gently. I have my suspicions, but that's all. You really don't know. I swear on the honor of the scout. I tried to defuse the situation. I'm going crazy trying to figure this out, and then they hit me on the head, and I end up in the hospital. Mary, you have to help me to the hospital. It's a long story. Mary, could we meet? Please, so you don't want to sleep with me, Dave, she asked nervously, putting me in a dilemma. How exactly do you answer such a question from a stunning blonde with curvy curves? I couldn't honestly say no to that question, Mary, I answered honestly, but that's not the point. I just need to talk to you, okay, she murmured uncertainly. I'm free at lunchtime. Do you know the Anchor Pub on Broad Street? I'll find him, I assured her, and an hour later, I entered a busy bar looking for her with my eyes. Hey, Dave. She greeted me as I spotted her and waved inwardly, sighing at Mike's foolishness and letting such a beauty slip away. Clearly just off work to meet me, her suit skirt was shorter than usual, riding halfway up her thighs, with a hint of lace from her bra peeking through her thin white blouse. It didn't go unnoticed, not by the group of guys nearby trying to sneak a peek, and certainly not by me. Shall we relocate? I suggested politely, realizing that as she moved to make space for me, the view for the guys ogling her improved, a fact they were keenly aware of. It's fine, Dave. It adds spice to their day, and it doesn't bother me, she grinned, confirming she knew exactly what she was revealing. But thanks for the offer. It was thoughtful of you, and now they won't bother trying to hit on me with you here. You're okay with that? I asked, surprised by her reaction and the thrill it gave me. You're showing quite a bit of cleavage, Mary. Oh, 
Come on, Dave, she chuckled. Why do you think I dress like this? Why do you think I've left two buttons undone? Why do you think I haven't pulled my skirt down when it's hiked up this high? Fair point. No complaints from me, I said, feeling a rush I hadn't experienced with Mary before. Not that she hadn't always dressed provocatively, but never so openly in my presence before. So, what information are you seeking? Mary inquired, getting straight to the point. What's your current knowledge? I only know that my wife, all three wives, have been intimate with someone else, and I suspect I'm the only husband not involved. I believe you've hit the nail on the head, she confirmed. You were excluded because I chose you but backed out later. I attempted to dissuade the others when I realized what a foolish idea it was. Unfortunately, it was too late, as one of them had already acted prematurely. One of them? I asked, a sinking feeling settling in my stomach, although it hardly mattered in the end. Sorry, Dave. It was Gwen, Mary confirmed, my suspicions. She and Mike wasted no time, and I suspect they had already flirted a bit beforehand. I'm not saying he slept with her, but I'd be very surprised if he hadn't at least touched her bra or panties. Good lord, I exclaimed, genuinely shocked. I had no clue. Absolutely no clue. Did you know that Ted and Jilly had an affair last year what? I can't believe it. I exclaimed, even more astonished than when I heard about my own wife. Jill seems so prim and proper, not on the inside, apparently, Dave Mary smirked at me. I don't think Kim ever found out, but I'm pretty sure Nick did. Dear God, I've been living in a place full of immorality all this time without even realizing it. What about wife swapping? Mary continued, clearly enjoying her shocking revelations. I refuse to believe it, I retorted. Who? Who? Mike, Gwen, me, and you, she confessed, barely hiding her amusement. Nonsense. I exclaimed, completely amazed. I would have known about it. You would have, if it had actually happened, she admitted, still smiling at my reaction. It didn't go any further than that. But Gwen assumed that you wouldn't be interested, so she didn't want to risk asking you. It's probably for the best, I said firmly. I would never have agreed to this. And I suppose it would have saved you too, Mary, I continued. What do you mean, she asked, looking slightly offended. You made it clear that you didn't allow me to be intimate with you, I reminded her, actually, quite publicly. I was almost beaten up by your big friends. I'm sorry about that, she sighed. You caught me at the wrong moment. I was still mad at Mike. Besides, I said I wouldn't let you be close to me. I didn't say I wasn't intrigued by the idea, she said, looking at me with a charming smile that made me blush and struggle to find the right words to respond. To be honest, Dave, whether I'll actually let you is still a question. I'm very picky about who I sleep with. But if you were available, you'd be first on my list. Have you ever tried swallowing and coughing at the same time? Well, I did, and eventually, it got in my nose, which made my companion laugh. I desperately tried to change the subject, not because I didn't like the attention of a beautiful young woman, but because I couldn't find the right words to answer, and the situation escalated too quickly. Careful, Mary, I warned her, seeing a possible way out. You've got another button undone. I know, she smiled even more mischievously. I undid it. You have even more cleavage, I remarked, feeling a little worried but at the same time enjoying the view. I know, she echoed. Isn't it funny? I can see all your melons in their entirety. Are you complaining, she teased. I don't think so, I managed, my throat going dry as I hurriedly took a sip of the beer in front of me. Can you imagine how jealous these guys must be, Dave? Mary surprised me again. Why? I asked. They probably have a better view than me, but they know that's all they're going to get, she teased. 
They can see it, but they won't touch it. Can I do it? I asked incredulously, swallowing hard. It was hard for me to believe this conversation. The decision hasn't been made yet, Dave, she giggled. I know who I would vote for, but let's see how things go in the next few weeks. Why don't you figure out your situation yourself and then call me? Besides, I have to get back to work. Me too, I reluctantly agreed. I haven't had so much fun since the incident with Tom Hanks in the duck pond. I need some time to think, okay? Sure, she replied, getting up from her seat, revealing the kind of underwear she was wearing, a naughty teaser. I muttered to her, knowing full well that she did it on purpose. Do you think you could handle a girl who likes to flaunt herself in public? She whispered back. Mike couldn't, it used to bother him. So I had to restrain myself. I think I could, I smiled at her, realizing how much I would like it. I would gladly agree then pull yourself together and be sure to call me, she concluded, bending down to kiss me, which was supposed to hit me on the cheek but, much to my delight, missed. I advise you to act quickly. And with that, she walked away, swaying her hips exaggeratedly. Blimey, mate, does she have a sister? I overheard from the raised platform just above me, where the watchers had stationed themselves for the prime view. Or a friend, chimed in another. I'll inquire, I joined in the good-natured banter to indicate I wasn't bothered, grinning up at them. Lucky bloke, a third one interjected, envy evident on all their faces. Indeed I am, I agreed, waving them off as I followed her out, giving the impression I was leaving with her. By Joe, I felt fantastic in that moment. I wasn't certain I'd found all the answers I sought, but somehow in less than an hour, it all seemed less significant and the future didn't appear so grim anymore. After checking myself out of the hospital in surprisingly good condition, my wife Gwen was taken aback to find me at home when she returned from work. Mike, she exclaimed, rushing over to me. When were you discharged? I was just about to freshen up and visit you today, I responded, gesturing for her to pause. But we need to talk. Of course, honey, she said sweetly. I've missed you so much. Enough to stop seeing Mike? I snapped, and she froze, her expression draining of color. Well, Gwen. Enough to stop seeing Mike? I repeated. Enough to prevent him from hitting me again? Gwen stood there speechless and visibly shaken, her attempts to speak futile. Have you swallowed your tongue, Gwen? I spat out, my tone implacable. How could you even think that you could get away with this? The six of you are deceiving each other and leaving your poor ignorant husband in the dark. It wasn't like that, honey. Gwen finally sobbed. I swear, I was only with Mike. I promised you that it would be with only one man. You also promised that it would only be once, I reminded her sharply. What happened to that promise? How did you? She stopped, realizing that the situation was really out of control, and lowered her head. Tears flowed from her eyes. I figured it out more or less on my own. I answered her unfinished question. Mary told me the rest. That woman, she flashed angrily, looking back at me. If she had kept her word, if she hadn't chickened out, none of this would have been necessary. You're a naive fool, I spat contemptuously in her direction. Did you really think that? I would agree to this. Did you really think that I would let that idiot Mike sleep with my wife without consequences? Nick and Ted agreed to this, she mumbled miserably. Ted already had a relationship with Jilly, I continued, as if it were common knowledge. And Kim has been eyeing Nick for months. Do you know about Ted and Jilly? Gwen asked, her eyes wide, clearly shocked. And Nick too, I suggested, unsure if he knew. How will Kim react when she finds out she's late to the party? That her loving husband cheated on her with one of her best friends? Oh my god, Dave, my wife pleaded, bursting into tears again. She can't know, she shouldn't know. 
she was the hardest to convince, and if she found out that we had cheated on her, she would have kicked Ted out, I snapped, thinking about the plan for the next day. What about you, Gwen? How long had you been dating Mike before our fishing trip? I didn't know, Dave, she exclaimed, tears streaming down her cheeks. I swear we didn't do that. Can you swear that he never touched you, Gwen? I insisted, my accusations hitting home, making Gwen sob louder and lower her head. Can you swear you've never slept with him, Gwen? I continued, gaining momentum, getting neither an answer nor a rebuttal. No, she cried through her sobs. I didn't do it, Dave, I swear it. I really believed her that time, because the only times she showed me such attention were so rare that it was like receiving birthday presents. At this point, I had to abruptly stop my tirade and rush to the bathroom on the first floor to vomit into the toilet. My last question brought nothing but another fit of tears, confirming my suspicions about what she had done. Despite claiming that she did not, like doing the same for me, her husband, the worst part is that I couldn't help but wonder how many times in the last few months I've kissed those lips, disgusted by the time I managed to control my nausea and my insides threatened to rebel, emptying the contents of the pan, having cleaned myself up, I reluctantly returned to the living room, not knowing what to do but fully aware that the inevitable end of our marriage loomed ahead. When I arrived, she was gone. I assumed that Gwen had retired to our bedroom to grieve over the collapse of her once comfortable life, but I resisted the urge to climb the stairs and make sure of it. To be honest, at that moment, I didn't care at all where she was or what she was doing. I decided that since my life was ruined, I could ruin other people's lives. Fortunately, I got through to him when I called Tom's house, and he greeted me warmly, still thinking that we were good friends. I quickly corrected her misconception. I know, Kim, I said firmly, dismissing her questions about my well-being after the fall. I know I didn't fall, and I know who hit me. I know that you six lying individuals are entering into illegal relationships with each other behind my back, and I know the details of who was involved with whom. Oh, she muttered, then fell silent. Moreover, Kim, I know something that you don't. I continued recklessly. I know that your husband Ted has been having an affair with Jilly behind your back for over a year. I know that they were close partners and I know that they set you up with Nick so that they could continue without being noticed it's impossible Dave Kim screamed Nick and I have only had a close relationship twice and I ended it out of guilt maybe for you but not for them Kim I blurted out as far as I understand they had connections in the Ted office and run down motels even in public parks and maybe even in your own home and this has been going on since last summer I burst into a tirade. Inventing details along the way way unsure of their accuracy but indifferent with the sole purpose of making her despise him I don't believe you Dave Kim exclaimed although it was becoming obvious that she was starting to believe whereas he now I insisted and her silence confirmed that he was not at home I'll tell you where he is Kim I continued trying to come up with a plausible location there in that exhibition center that we just finished do you know that it's fully furnished now there's even a large double bed I know she sobbed back although I had no idea how she knew that because I didn't know it myself you idiot and her too damn them both this is not the first time he has cheated but as far as I understand this will be his last time this was news to me and I refrained from the next lie I had prepared I'm going to divorce him Kim ran granted I'm going to take everything he is I'll kick him out of the house he will never see the children again I will take revenge yes I will take revenge well done I supported her what about you Dave she steered the conversation in an unexpected direction for me I need revenge do you want to be with me me yes you are Dave she shouted Gwen always talks about how good you are in bed when we complain about our husbands do you want to show me how good you are oh my god it came as a complete surprise to me how should I react to this maybe I could postpone it Kim I hesitantly refused realizing that if she found out how much of my Information was fabricated she might react violently I really need to figure out my own situation before contacting anyone else good she grumbled I understand but promise me you'll think about it I'll definitely think about it Kim I assured her realizing that I was being sincere this time Kim was attractive yes Kim I thought hanging up the phone I'll definitely think about it so one obstacle overcome with four more to tackle scratch that not exactly for my animosity towards Kim seemed to have.
plateaued partly because she appeared appeared the least enthusiastic about getting involved and partly due to her offer yes that's correct I was already contemplating that in reality make that three obstacles cons I know that they were close partners and I know that they set you up with Nick so that they could continue without being noticed. It's impossible, Dave. Kim screamed. Nick and I have only had a close relationship twice, and I ended it out of guilt. Maybe for you, but not for them, Kim, I blurted out. As far as I understand, they had connections in the TED office, in rundown motels, even in public parks, and maybe even in your own home. And this has been going on since last summer, I burst into a tirade, inventing details along the way, unsure of their accuracy but indifferent, with the sole purpose of making her despise him. I don't believe you, Dave, Kim exclaimed, although it was becoming obvious that she was starting to believe. Where is he now? I insisted, and her silence confirmed that he was not at home. I'll tell you where he is, Kim, I continued trying to come up with a plausible location. They're in that exhibition center that we just finished. Do you know that it's fully furnished now? There's even a large double bed, I said. I know, she sobbed back, although I had no idea how she knew that because I didn't know it myself. You idiot! And her too, damn them both. This is not the first time he has cheated, but as far as I understand, this will be his last time. This was news to me, and I refrained from the next lie I had prepared. I'm going to divorce him, Kim, I ran, granted. I'm going to take everything he has. I'll kick him out of the house. He will never see the children again. I will take revenge, yes, I will take revenge, I supported her. Well done, I said. What about you, Dave? She steered the conversation in an unexpected direction for me. I need revenge. Do you want to be with me? Me? Yes, you, Dave, she shouted. Gwen always talks about how good you are in bed when we complain about our husbands. Do you want to show me how good you are? Oh my god, it came as a complete surprise to me. How should I react to this? Maybe I could postpone it. Kim, I hesitantly refused, realizing that if she found out how much of my information was fabricated, she might react violently. I really need to figure out my own situation before contacting anyone else. Good, she grumbled. I understand, but promise me you'll think about it. I'll definitely think about it, Kim, I assured her, realizing that I was being sincere this time. Kim was attractive, yes. Kim. I thought, hanging up the phone. I'll definitely think about it. So one obstacle overcome, with four more to tackle. Scratch that, not exactly, for my animosity towards Kim seemed to have plateaued, partly because she appeared the least enthusiastic about getting involved, and partly due to her offer. Yes, that's correct. I was already contemplating that. In reality, make that three obstacles considering Ted and unfortunately my own wife Gwen were already casualties, though Gwen's ordeal was far from over. Little did I realize, the actions I had initiated were about to take on a life of their own, with Kim unexpectedly taking on the role of Avenger against Nick and Jill, unbeknownst to me after our phone call ended. Kim, full of determination, grabbed her rolling pin, stormed out of the house, and drove straight to the new show house, unbeknownst to me. Eidering Ted and unfortunately my own wife Gwen were already casualties though Gwen's ordeal was far from over little did I realize the actions I had initiated were about to take on a life of their own with Kim unexpectedly taking on the role of a vang against Nick and Jill unbeknownst to me after our phone call ended Kim full of determination grabbed her rolling pin stormed out of the house and drove straight to the new show house unbeknownst to me. I had inadvertently stumbled upon a semblance of truth in my misguided accusations regarding Ted and Jill's whereabouts. While it's unlikely they were engaging in any illicit activity in the king-sized bed at the house, they were indeed present when Kim arrived. Their presence was justified, Jill had been involved in furnishing the house, and Ted was responsible for paperwork. 
however, Kim didn't afford them the opportunity to clarify. Instead, she impulsively attacked, rendering Ted unconscious and engaging in a physical altercation with Jill, who managed to defend herself. In today's digital age, a bystander captured the altercation on their state-of-the-art iPhone 5. One can only imagine their astonishment as they witnessed Jill and Kim's intense confrontation, complete with shouting, cursing, and clothing being torn. Despite Jill's physical advantage, her less substantial attire left her at a disadvantage. By the time the police intervened, both women were exhausted, with Kim's ample bosom exposed and Jill left with little more than her underwear. The internet video became popular, starting off on YouTube and then spreading rapidly, whatever that means, sorry, but I'm just not part of that generation. Jill's family witnessed the aftermath, and her large brother, emphasis on large, inexplicably blamed it all on his brother-in-law. This led to the big brother ending up in jail, while Nick wound up in the local hospital, the same one I had recently left, though in a worse condition than I had been in. I felt that justice had been served, except for Mike, who still had consequences awaiting him. Meanwhile, I returned home to confront Gwen, giving her a deadline of 24 hours to leave. We can work through this, Dave, she pleaded, emphasizing her attractive physique in an attempt to sway me. However, her physical charms weren't enough to change my mind, so the deadline stood. Less than half the time later, she returned with none other than Mike himself, hoping to persuade me to reconsider. Whatever Mike had used against me on that memorable day, I found that a seven iron served the same purpose quite effectively. Like an older sibling, I too spent two nights in custody, while Mike was in a ward nearby Nick's, I learned this from others, not from visiting them, I can assure you. Upon returning home, Gwen had left for good, putting an end to that chapter of my life and our construction company, it went bankrupt, to add insult to injury. The other three had guaranteed the bank loans two months before I joined them, and we never sorted out the paperwork. Tough luck, huh? Now, I'm not trying to boast, but alright, maybe I am. However, I didn't emerge completely unharmed myself. I lost my main source of income. But you know what? When it came to our divorce, it reflected my circumstances at the time, and Gwen's aspirations of depending on me were dashed. I did consider Kim's offer extensively, but ultimately I never accepted it, and thus I never experienced the pleasures of her undoubtedly appealing physique. Of course, there were plenty of other options out there. Is that Dave came the voice on the phone once again. Hey Mary, I greeted, a smile forming on my lips. You've been on my mind. Just on your mind, she teased. I heard about your divorce from Gwen. Shouldn't you be doing more than just thinking? I need to find work, I replied somberly. Can't court a lovely lady when my wallet's empty. Guess what? My dad wants to meet you, she announced unexpectedly. I've told him all about you. Your dad? I asked. Yes, Dave. He and Mike's dad used to work together, both were carpenters. Did their apprenticeship side by side. Mike's dad? That's how we crossed paths. Dad's looking for someone to take over, and Mike's dad suggested you. But Mike isn't a carpenter, and neither am I, I pointed out, the situation spiraling too quickly for me to grasp. Neither is my dad now, she chuckled. Didn't you know my last name is Driscoll? You're kidding. Not at all. Driscoll Construction, really. It's a family business, Dave. Dad plans to retire in four or five years, I caught myself muttering. The largest construction firm in the area, exactly, Mary laughed, triggering memories of past unhappiness. I promised Dad I'd handle the first interview. Are you available tonight? I suppose I could make it, so I was sitting in the anchor pub, in the very place where I first met Mary. She arrived fashionably late, and her presence was made known by the sudden silence in the corner of the bar where I was sitting. The image of her approach was etched into my memory as I tried to ignore the cheers of the men nearby. 
Have you been waiting long, Dave? Mary greeted me in a transparent blouse. I asked incredulously, remembering our previous meeting. Come on, Dave, it's just a little cheeky, she teased. I like cheeky ones, I sighed, unable to take my eyes off her blouse. Do you like what you see? Mary grinned, settling back in her chair. You risk ruining the wardrobe, I warned, clearly amused. No chance, she grinned faintly. Any issues? None whatsoever, dear, none at all, I responded. All right, Mary answered, leaning in for a kiss. You're just my type, Dave. I sense we're in for quite a journey, don't you think? I smiled back at her, nodding in affirmation. I pondered whether I was ready for this bold and wonderful change in my life, but I was resolved to embrace it fully. Besides, I anticipated an adventure ahead and eagerly awaited its beginning.